Okay, with this is the second episode talking about this 1912 Seagrave fire truck that we're going to get running. But just to let you know where we're at, we're at the Miracle of America Museum in Polson, Montana. And they have one of just about everything that was ever made in the United States or just about any place else. This place is absolutely full of antique machinery. There's a bullet nose Studebaker over there. And there's a great big huge engine of some sort. A bunch of farm tractors over there. And uh, where, this is where he keeps all of his fire trucks. There's an Oshkosh right there. And over on the other side, well actually we've got a Ford with a snow plow mounted on it. And let's see. Well, you can see he's got just about everything around here. Here's a Fordson little crawler tractor. And this appears to be another Seagrave. This is a bigger Seagrave fire truck and a lot newer, probably 1945 or 1955 right in there. So we're going to update you on what we have done to the 1912 Seagrave. First of all, there was a bunch of few parts missing off of the starter drive. And so the uh, self-commencer, as it was known back when it was put on this thing, wouldn't engage the flywheel. So what we had to do is we found a couple of uh, old Bendix drives from God knows what it was off of. We had to do a little bit of machining with a lathe in order to cut down one of these parts to make this Bendix spring fit, but we finally managed to get this great big starter motor down here. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the Bendix spring and the Bendix gear, and we got that to function by pirating a spring off God knows what and machining that shaft to the point that spring would fit. So Here's the other side of this Wisconsin T-head engine with dual, exhaust, or dual ignition. A T-head, you guys know all about it, just skip forward. It's like a flathead, only instead of having the valves side by side, they got valves on each, either side of the cylinder. So there's an intake valve on the right side and an exhaust valve on the left side. And so basically they call it a T-head instead of a L head, which is what like a Ford V8 would be. We got chain drive and very worn out solid rubber tires. But now we're going to show you how we're going to make it run. We borrowed a battery and once we managed to get the starter to engage we got this old battery here that spins it over. You can see these wonderful cables. There's big bare spots in them. And they're probably just a fire ready to start on the fire truck. So we got the thing to turn over. We went into this Bosch distributor, which is really a strange duck. Filed the points, managed to get no resistance across them. And then this old rusty condenser down there we checked it and it is not shorted out so we borrowed a coil from something else mounted it here on the firewall and connected the correct end of the coil to the distributor and condenser and then we got a jumper wire here to go to the battery and we did get sparks through the distributor like i mentioned in the other video there's a hole here for a magneto and there is no magneto for this for the dual ignition function. Oh, did we did so, we drain it already? What we did is forget gasoline to this thing. We've got a hand pump. He's uh, filming. And a couple of lines. And we just hook that up to one of those lawyer gas cans they make these days. Don't look at me and get on that subject and plumbed it into the fuel system of the Seagrave and we managed to get gas to this carburetor and then we stopped. 
So we're going to pump some more gas in there now and see if that carburetor float holds or whether it leaks all over the place. The other strange thing about this carburetor, it does have a choke valve in it. Um, if you're a Brit, you would call it a strangler valve. But there's absolutely no external way to control it. There's not a shaft sticking out. There's not a wire. There is nothing. You just manipulate it with your fingers, I guess. I have no idea how that works. Well, anyway, we'll get you going when we start cranking it and make it run.